Good morning, everyone, and we praise the Lord for this wonderful day na binigay niya sa atin, especially as this is the first Sunday of February. Um, it is a joyful thing to remember and to to think na ang Panginoon ay uh, faithful and true sa atin. Ano na? Second year, a uh, second month na ng, ng year, and uh, mabilis lang. No? We have five Sundays, January, and now we are now on the love month, sabi nila. So there are, kung i-count natin itong February, there are 10 months to go sa 2022. Ang bilis lang. So the reason why we always keep up with the date and the number of Sundays that we have left is that to remind us of the task that God has given us. Sana hindi tayo masiro for this year. At magiging encouragement din not only to us but to others how we do the task that God has entrusted to us. Especially as we go and uh, share the gospel and make disciples. Alam ko, we are doing that. And sa harap ng Panginoon, we can say that um, Lord, we thank you for giving us this wisdom and even the the enablement to do this for thy glory and honor. Well, una, nagpapasalamat ako for um, the thing that we have been praying na ngayon nandito na and all of you can see the goodness of God. We've been praying this for maybe two weeks, three weeks, and then... Uh, Binigay ng Panginoon through you as you share your blessings sa atin. And now, nandito na ngayon, a uh, whole new set sa computer uh, system natin to uh, improve our service for the Lord. And even those, uh, we know that we are worshiping together with us, not only here in, in Bangkok and Thailand, but uh, in Philippines and other countries as well. Salamat po sa Panginoon. And praying that uh, uh, we do this for the glory and to transmit the word of God at magiging encouragement din para sa lahat. Okay? Now, we start this month. Sabi nila, love month. But uh, today, our topic is about worry. Okay? So, uh, praying that after the message, God will talk to us about worry. Okay? Huh? And uh, is settle nating issue na ito sa puso natin because God has something for us, especially blessing from His Word that we're going to talk about uh, today. Merong isang uh, scholar by the name of McKnight. He made a comment sa passage of Matthew six six twenty five up to thirty four. Ang sabi niya about this passage, this passage is designed to make us feel uncomfortable about our lifestyle. So are you ready to be uncomfortable about your lifestyle? Sige, sama-sama tayo lahat. No? Because this is the Word of God that He has given us. Remember, that this is still nasa loob pa rin ng the Sermon on the Mount. Because the Sermon on the Mount is from Matthew 5, 6, and then it ended in Matthew chapter 7. So meaning, ang mga tao that were listening to them, to, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, mostly the disciples. Okay? Or the followers or learners of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, the Lord Jesus Christ, before He went back to heaven, He encouraged and iniwan niya ito mga salita sa mga disciple at followers niya. The same thing na sinasabi niya para sa atin ngayon to look ahead sa taong ito. Okay? Look ahead sa taong ito. Uh, we're going to read the passage that we have. Matthew 6, 24. And some of you have studied Bible. Ang title nito ay Stop Worrying. Or don't worry. Kaya hindi ko na binigyan ng title. Pwede naman natin bigyan ng anxiety. But let's uh, stick na makita natin sa Bible. Okay? Matthew 6, 25. 
up to 34. The Word of God says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't there more life, more to life than food, and more to the body than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you more valuable than they are? In which of you, by worrying, can add even one hour to his life? Why do you worry about clothing? Think about how the flowers of the field grow. They do not work or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory was cloth like one of these. And if this is how God clothes the wild grass, which is here today and tomorrow is tossed into the fire to heat the oven, won't he cloth you even more, you people of little faith? So then, don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the unconverted pursue these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But above all, pursue his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So then, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough trouble of its own. Um, shall we pray first? Okay. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day, the day of worship, where we can come before your presence to engage your presence in our midst. It is a wonderful thing, and it is a thing that we look forward to always, to be in thy presence, to be in fellowship, with our brothers and sisters in the Lord, knowing that in the midst of this gathering, your presence is with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you will forgive us of our sins we have committed in thought and word or in deed to make us worthy, dear Heavenly Father, to linger in their presence and to absorb the message of your word for us today. May the Holy Spirit will fill this place each and everyone who are here, and even those who are listening or worshiping together with us online. Bless the, them, Heavenly Father. But before that, Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are not here today, those who are not feeling well, and those who are still staying in their houses or apartments, that you use the technology, our online worship, to reach them and even to comfort them and encourage them. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you will restore their health so that they can continue the task which you have given them or even their work or even their duties and responsibilities. Dear Heavenly Father, we also pray for those who are sick in the hospital and even those, their Heavenly Father, who have gone before us, especially our friend, our colleague, our fellow pastor, Pastor Rex Duhina and his family. We pray that you will comfort his family, for those he have left behind. Dear Father, it is your will. And it is you only who knows how long we're going to stay. And it's your purpose. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you will comfort each, every member of the family or even the church. And it's a sad thing to be a church that their pastor have gone ahead. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to uphold that body of Christ where you put him and encourage the member to serve the Lord more and to be used in the ministry which you have put them. Lord, I pray that you will continue to be gracious and faithful to the body of Christ in that area. 
Lord, we pray also for those who are sick, our brothers who are ministers, pastors who are sick, and um, or maybe affected by the virus, and even those family or friends, relatives, namin na piktado, we're still praying for them, Lord, that you will heal them so that they can give praise and glory and testimony sa mga buhay nila. Once again, Lord, we pray that as we continue with the message of your word, the Holy Spirit will speak in our hearts as we apply the wisdom, even the rebuke, and even the encouragement in our hearts today, onwards. In Jesus' name, amen. When I read about uh, Matthew chapter 6, 25 up to 34, then, di ba, ang, ang, ang laman ng passage is about worry. Um, you know, worry is one big issue in life that God is so concerned about. Kung nag-worry ka sa worry mo, God is also concerned about that. But when I look at this passage, I remember the verse. Uhuli ko na to na insert. Wow. I remember the verse that when we were still small, pinapa memorize sa amin at kinakanta. Later on, naging easier siya to memorize kasi kanta. I remember the verse in um, I Oh, good. Ito. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. Sabi ni Isaiah sa Panginoon. Whose thoughts are fixed on you. Another verse siguro when we are worried. Um, King James translation niyan is, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Merong kinanta niyan. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. O oh Lord, that mind that is fixed and focused on the Lord will defeat worry. We go forward this year with a lot of things to worry about. Constant sa atin, work permit, trabaho. Yan ang mga constant na mga bagay to worry. Our families we have left in the Philippines or other parts of the world, mga bagay niyan na minsan kumukuha ng focus natin sa task na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon. God knows that this worry is a big issue in life. That's why He is so concerned about it. He knows what worrying can do to His followers and how it can hinder His plan and purpose and how it can produce a defeated and an unproductive life. Maybe we look at churches, we look at the body of Christ, how it has become an unproductive body of Christ because of worry. Minsan makita ko na unless ang worry in those places where persecution sa mga Christians ay grabe. Bakit ganon? Bakit sa mga lugar na walang persecution, hindi masyado ang persecution na merong body of Christ, bakit ang worry ay grave? Have you observed? Have you observed? Grabe. Bakit sa mga Christians, yung mga hindi, sabi nila fortunate at hindi mga maraming pera or ano, bakit parang wala silang worry? Bakit yung may mga maraming pera, yun ang grabing worry? Have you Notice that? Nabaliktad. Nabaliktad. Bakit maganda ang tulog ng mga, sabi nila, sa bahay kubo lang? Na yung bed nila, kawayan and everything, magandang tulog, yung banig lang, mat, kaysa sa mga water bed. Bakit ganun? Bakit maganda yung tulog ng may unan at saka yung mga electric pa dyan na may mga nag-massage-massage. Bakit? Ma 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 bakit ganun? Really think about it. 
Okay. Now, today we are going to learn about worry and how to do away with it. Now, listen. Sometimes worrying is beneficial. Worrying is beneficial. If you never worry, you really have something to worry about. Kita mo mga tao walang worry. Nandiyan o, sa panloy, smile lang the buong araw. You identify them? Upo lang dyan. Meron kami dyan nung una sa aming barangay. Patay na siya ngayon. He's dead now. All day long, smile lang siya ng smile as if nothing. Bahala kayo. Smile lang siya ng smile. Well, when you see people like that, people will say na, oops, there's something, you know. Parang ganun. But if people will see you na... Uh, especially a child of God na Christian na ang, ang ating feature, mukha natin ay puno ng worry, then people will people will worry <laughs> of how we what we are worrying. Sometimes worrying is beneficial. If you never worry, you really have something to worry. But there is a worry, and I do believe that this is the worry that the Bible is talking about, and this is the worry we're going to talk about. There is a worry that is excessive and unnecessary, sinful, and distrusting. Yan po ang worry na gusto address ng Panginoon sa atin. He doesn't want his followers to be what? excessively worried about something. Nagwo-worry kita na unnecessary ang ating pag-worry and minsan ang pag-worry natin ay sinful at nagpapakita ng distrustful attitude sa ating Panginoon. Matthew 6:25. When I talk about this, kahapon uh, papunta kami sa mall. I talked to Ate and I tried to ask her about worry. And during the small little conversation that we have, dalawa, nakita ko that when we look at worry, worry is a trust issue. If it is a trust issue, then it is absolutely a faith issue. Huwag worry ka. So, nakita ko that when the time will come that we worry, it will remind us of our trust in our God. So, kung puro na lang tayo worry, then we we look at it a little deeper that there's something there's something there an issue in our faith sa Panginoon. So, I ang kung sa ano pa ang mata ng Panginoon, uh, ga, the, the, the attention, nakuha ang attention ng Panginoon ng worrying ito because it affects us all. Nagiging unproductive tayo. Okay? Sa iba. Na, ang, 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 ang binigay ng Panginoon sa atin ng task ay hindi na. It becomes, you know, pag napuno tayo ng worry, it, we become unhealthy anxious yung iba nga yung mga bata sa sobrang worry nag suicide sa anxiety na hindi na makaya suicide well let's take a look at the word of god and ask questions that we know that god's word has an answer to that the first and big question we're talking about worry. The first question is, what are the things that people worry about? Do you know that God has disclosed things that people worry about? And that is our text today. Noon pa, who revealed this problem of the people? God, the creator of the universe. The creator of you. The creator of me. Has revealed. In fact, nanjan. If you're going to read 6.25 up to 34, parang story lang siya. But when you look at it deeply, God is telling us what people worry about. Okay, let's start. People worry about, let's read verse 25 to 27. Ang sabi dito ni Jesus, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, 
what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't there more life, more to life than food and more to the body than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky, an example. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, meaning the opposite of that, human beings sow, reap, and gather. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you more val valuable than they are? And which of you by worrying can add even one hour to his life? So what are the things people worry about? Looking at these verses, the first thing we can see that Jesus Christ said, people worry about life's extension. How to extend life. Diba namin ngayon nag-o-offer ng mga anti-aging na kung ano-anong mga, mga gamot na makapahaba, uh, the, the fountain of youth, kung saan punta ka ng mga prachinburi, kung saan pa sa India na meron doon mga gamot ng root ng mga kahoy na inumin mo. To extend life. In this verse, God reveals what people worry about. The first one, life extension. Now, why do people worry? <laughs> people worry because they focus on the future. Diba? Ang worry dumadating sa atin when we look at the future. Ito, ano ino worry mo sa future? Food. What you will eat or drink or your shelter. So, ang isang bagay na nagkoko sa worry sa atin, itong mga future cares. Future cares. Kung tingnan natin, in other words, ito ay mga basic necessities. Food, drink, shelter, di ba? Clothing, basic necessities yan. So, bakit naging too worried tayo dyan? You know, ang sagot sa worry natin dito, no? Sa atong mga basic necessities. When we look at our cabinet, parang sabing kulang. Pero kung makita mo na sobra, there's a box below there na pwede mo ilagay doon. Ilagay mo doon. May pangalan na may mga toys. Di ba? May mga clothing. Lahat. Kung sobra, bigay mo doon. Ilagay mo. Baka hindi makasya sa kabinet. Lagay natin doon. We, these are the things that constantly bothers us. At nagwo-worry sa atin. Now, basic necessities are important, but it should not be the ultimate pursuit in life. Remember that. When Jesus Christ was addressing or teaching his disciples, sabi ni Jesus Christ, basic necessities. Yes, those are basic. But that is, that, that is not the ultimate pursuit in life. Kita ba natin? Why do we work? Why do we seek for greener pasture? Sabihin, for basic necessities. Okay. Yes, basic necessities, walang problema dyan. But God is reminding us today that it should not be the ultimate pursuit in life. Look at verse 25. There is more to life than basic necessities. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Kaya it is a reminder din sa atin na ang time ng Panginoon, ibigay natin sa Kanya kung time niya, huwag natin kunin ang time ng Panginoon to spend it looking for basic necessities. Pwede, pwede naman ikat eh, kasi kulang eh. Kulang ang provision eh. Ng Panginoon. So I have to make something. I have to add more hours of working. And it's so sad, minsan, 
na ang time ng Panginoon ay makat na for basic necessities. God is reminding us today, there is more to life than basic necessities. Look at the birds. Ginawa ng Panginoon na example ng birds. Actually, the birds, sa ibang translation, ravens. Alam niyo kung anong ugali ng ravens? Parang nag, ano lang to, nagsusweep lang to, kumukuha lang to ng... Hindi, grabe no? Kasi kung birds lang, medyo mga birds, na, birds naman na mabait. Pero itong raven talaga, hindi to siya mabait when it comes to food. Hindi naman to nagsishare. Kain lang yan ng, ng kain, ang ravens. But the example, even the ravens nga, daw sa ilunggo, daw dalok-dalok, wala ka problema sa kinakain niya. Okay? They don't sow, do reap, or gather into barns. In other words, they don't accumulate. But man does. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Look at the birds. They do not sow, or reap, or gather into barns. Anong ibig sabihin ng Panginoon niyan? No. Tingnan nyo ang birds. <laughs> He is addressing the disciples. Tingnan nyo. Ang tao, nag-gather. Nag-re-reap. Nag-accumulate. Ang birds, wala. Kasi ang Panginoon, kinukumpare niya ang birds eh, to human beings. Now here's the thing. We spend so much time and energy on the pursuit of basic necessities that we miss out completely the life they are intended to support. The life that is, it, it is intended to support ng basic necessities, nakalimutan natin ang life, we concentrate on the basic necessities. Sa sobra kahanap ng mga bagay, the basic necessities, nakalimutan natin ang mas importante pa dyan, which is life. In other words, we major in the minors. Yan ang isang bagay kung bakit tayo napupuno sa worry. Kasi mga minor na mga bagay, yun ang mini-major natin. Okay. If life is more important, then give more priority on how to make that life the way God wants us to, to, to have. Nakalimutan na natin ang ano, more necessary kaysa sa change natin sa basic necessity. We major in the minor. Now, what do I mean? The objects of our anxiety, which are food, drink, and clothing, are considered more important than the life and the body which they supply. In uh, ang ipasimple na natin oh. nag, nang, nang, naging importante pa ang 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 baro at sa kapagkain kaysa sa kata, sa, sa body, sa katawan. And do you see the difference that that God is showing us? Anoon mo ang ano yan? Kung patay na ang kabayo, ano yan? Ano 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 gawin mo sa damo? Kung patay na ang kabayo, ano ang pinapakita sa atin example? That the kabayo is more important than the damo. But this is an example to us na ipakita ng Panginoon, we worry because we focus on the damo. Nakalimutan na natin. The next question is, why do people gather or accumulate? Masama ba? Magather? I don't see any thing wrong sa paggather or accumulate. Ang masama dito kung sobra-sobra na pag-accumulate. That's the the idea here, no? Sa tanong natin. Why do people gather or accumulate? Ang sagot, to have a secure future. Gusto natin ma-secure ang future natin. Di ba? Agree tayo dyan lahat. Even ako. Nagiging secure ang future. Hindi naman tayo na mag-go to the future na suicide na bahala na. Have faith lang. Yes, have faith. But merong mga steps tayo na gagawin to secure our future. But my next question, 
how sure are we about our future? Huh? Merong dalawang, ang, ang verse 27, gusto ko ibigay sa inyo into, into two, two translations. Kasi I want to, to let you see the better one, the better between the two. Okay? So this is Matthew chapter 6, 27. Yung dalawa. Kasi ang King James nagbigay sa atin ito. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Na ano yan eh, na attached dyan sa don't worry about food or raiment or what, like, like the birds, and then pumasok ka agad ito, nung una pa, parang hindi naman tinitindihan. Let's look at other translations. Good news. Can any of you live a bit longer by worrying about it? Now, if you look the good news translations and connect it to the upper two verses, ito siya, better translation. I would like to give you the idea. Ang cubit before can measure length or time. Although, may, ibang mga, mga, may ibang mga translator na sabi nila ang cubit is a day, araw. May nagsasabi. So, a cubit, ang cubit siguro dito, ah, meter, something like, hindi ko na ano ang exact, but a cubit is, kaya mag-measure tayo ng refrigerator, cubit ang tawa dyan. It's from here up to that point, cubit ang inaano nila. Okay, but a cubit, sabi ng King James, a cubit can measure length or time, although they has been suggested. Now, kung tingnan natin ang King James, sabi niya, who, of, who any of you can add a cubit to his height? Stature, di ba? But other translations, length of or age. Stature, length, or age ang binibigay. Now, you go back to the two verses. Because it's worrying about the future. Most scholars take the term to describe age or length of time. Although a few refer it to bodily stature. Pero ito ha, baka sinabi nyo, ah, mas maganda palang iba sa King James or whatever. Okay. Nag-compare lang tayo. But the verdict is this. However, the point either way is clear. Either this one or this one. Talking about height or maybe <clears throat> kung vertical or horizontal height. Okay, wait. This one is about age or length. Listen, the point either way is clear. Worrying adds nothing to height or lifespan. Did you get the point? Whether it is height or whether it is age or length of time or lifespan, walang may tutulong ang worry. Sa dalawa. So, when we look at the future, one of the things that we worry is also, or people worry, is about lifespan. According to research na pinuulit-ulit natin, Filipinos, ang ating life expectancy sa Pilipinos, 65 years lang yung edad. Uh, minimum mga Pilipino na mamatay sa ganong edad. Sino Amerikano dito? Wala no? So, meaning mga Pilipino ito. So, medyo 65. 65. Ilang taon na tayo? Okay. So, ilang taon na lang natira na medyo ano na natin yan. That's always the question that we, we ask, no? Para to remind us, ala, ano na kaya ang... And not only Filipinos worry about lifespan. Sa Afghanistan nga, sa kanila, 25 years old lang eh. Bakit? May gira dun eh. Oh, dating mo 25 ah, patay siya agad sa bala. People worry about food, about raiment. People worry about the future. And one of the things that we worry, people worry is lifespan. Sabi ng Panginoon, who of you can add length of time? Meaning, it is God who determines our lifespan. 
who determines lifespan? God. God already determined our lifespan. Do you want to know when? I tried to ask this my students, elementary and high school. Sabi ko, if you have a chance to ask God, na dito sila o, do you want to know when are you going to die? Sabi ng iba, hindi. No. Merong isa, dalawa na sabi, yes. Ko, aba? <laughs> Grabe, no? If I'm going to ask you that, do you want to know when will be the time? Sabi ng iba, hindi lang, Pastor. Gusto ko surprise. Ha, talaga? So, surprise ka talaga. Like, God determined our life span. Worrying will not add days to your life span. Or baka nag-worry ka ngayon kasi ang Panginoon pala ang nag-determine ng life span mo. So, ano ang punto ng Panginoon dito? Na pinaalam niya sa atin that He is the one who holds the life span. Okay. Ito. Stop worrying about your lifespan. Just continue fulfilling God's plan. He's talking to His disciples. And how they can continue. He's talking to us now how we can continue this life. Wag mo worry ka lifespan. Kailan ka mamantay? Ang iba, nag-worry lang. Wala nang nagawa. This, just try to make it safe. Anong, ano, anong mangyari sa akin? Pupunta ako sa ibang lugar. Ay di mag-shorten ng lifespan ko. Punta ako doon, wala akong kainin. Punta ako doon, walang magsusupport sa akin. Eh, mapapamadali ako. But, you know, if we worry about those things, then how about the task that God has given us? You know, one of the things na naalala ko sa parable of the talent, yung isa na hindi niya ginamit ang talent na binigay sa kanya ng Panginoon. He's worried about his master. Hindi siya nakagawa. Hindi niya, hindi niya na, na nagawa ang task na binigay sa kanya ng Panginoon. Is that the thing? Na may, alam na natin as a body of Christ that we have a ministry to do and we have a task from God na binigay niya sa atin. These are the things that will hinder us, that will derail us, itong worry. Let's go to the next. What are the things people worry about? Let's take a look naman sa Matthew 28, 30. The first one was life ano? extension. Verse 28, why do you worry about clothing? Think about how the flowers of the field grow. They do not work or spin. Actually, ang flowers, ang ibang translation is lilies. The lily. Okay? Nakita tayo na wa, mga water lily. Yun po siya. They do not work or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory was cloth like one of this. And if this is how God cloths the wild grass, which is here today and tomorrow is tossed into the fire to hit the oven, won't he cloth you even more? May ano eh, may dagdag. You people of little faith. So what are the things that people worry about? Number two, people worry about life's beautification. Una, life. Paano natin ma-extend ang buhay na ito? Ikalawa, paano natin ma-beautify ang buhay na ito? You know, Cosmetics is a multi-billion dollar business. Well, becoming a multi-billion dollar business shows that people around the world would pursue physical elaboration. In other words, people put emphasis on outside beauty. Hindi naman ito news sa atin na nandito ngayon sa, sa loob ng room na ito. But maybe it's gonna be news to those who are listening to us online sa Thailand at especially sa Bangkok po. Parang minsan lang ang street na walang beauty. Oo. 
5 o'clock pa lang ng umaga. Bukas na po sila. If you want to visit here, na kung tamad ka maligo, you just go there sa parlo, magpa-shampoo ka doon, magpa, ano ka, and you can see, baka manibago tayo na even hindi lang ang babae ang nag-blower doon sa salon, pati mga lalaki, it's just a natural business na sa kanila. May mga tattoo pa yun. Eh, normal na, na ano ba? No? Mura lang ang magpa no dito. Baka, ano na, baka wala naman tayo pinup- sinasabi na mga pangalan ng hospital or what. Pero dami din, no, mura lang magpa no magpa facelift at lahat. No? Ang dami. Uh, yan nga, naging famous din ang, 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 ano, ang, ang Bangkok. Well, isang bagay na makita mo at the back of it all, people here ay beauty conscious din sila. They put more emphasis on what is on the outside. Tayong mga anak ng Panginoon, di naman sabihin natin, ay wala, Christian tayo, hindi tayo maggamit ng makeup. Di naman. Ay, you just, ay, huwag sobra. No. Mga babae lang, huwag lalaki. Okay. Siyempre naman. Uh, inaano lang natin yan, binabalance na natin. Kasi, you know, God has put a line that we're not going to cross. So don't cross it. Okay. Now, so, kung tingnan natin, the, the, next, the, two, the next point is life's beautification. Okay? People worry about how to beautify life. You know, in this passage, who beautifies his creation? It is the Lord. It is the Lord. You know, pag nag- nag-create ang Panginoon sa lahat, even the grass, the fowls and everything, the, the trees, doon sa Genesis, siya ang responsible for beautification. Siya ang nagsusustain yan eh. He is responsible for beautification. Now, if God is responsible for the beautification of this grass and these flowers, how much more tayo that we are created better than than those. Yung mga lilies, yung mga wild grass, nakita mo? Sa bundok, wala naman nagdidilig. God provided dew para maging maganda. God is responsible for the beautification of His creation. Now, when, when we think about it, now how does God look at beauty? Ito ang importante para makuha ang ating worry. Kasi minsan, ang ating pagpa-beautify is to show to the people but we forgot to show it to the Lord. Now, how God does look, now, how does God look at beauty? Tingnan natin, ang side ng Panginoon, how He looks at beauty. Tingnan nyo ang scripture. Dito sa 1 Peter 3, 3 up to 5. A reminder of Peter sa mga Christians. Sabi ni Peter, you should not use outward aids to make yourselves beautiful, such as the way you fix your hair or the jewelry you put on. Mga bling-bling. Okay. Or the dresses you wear. Instead, ano sabi ni Peter? Your beauty should consist of your true inner self. The ageless beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of the greatest value in God's sight. Don't forget that. May binigay pa siya na example. For the devout women of the past who placed their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. How? Itong sikreto. By submitting themselves to their husbands. Makapabuti pala itong mag-submit sa husband? Hmm? <laughs> Ay, sabi ng Bible eh. The, the, the faithful women of old. Meaning, they live out the things that was in their sa loob. And mat- that makes them beautiful. You know what? Ito eh. Ang, ang, how, how does, how God, uh, I mean, how does God look at beauty? Yan nga ang isang bagay na reminder sa atin. Di ba, we worry because we put on the, the, the facade. We forgot what is in the inside. So kung ang ating Diyos ang titingin, saan siya tumitingin una? 
on the inside. Meaning, bigyan din natin ng emphasis, more emphasis, ang inside sa labas. And that is the greatest value in God's sight. You know, alam, ang mga sinasabi ng ibang mga young people, pastor, okay lang kung hindi, medyo hindi maganda ang ugali, pero guapa. Kasi yung ugali, ma-ano lang eh, ma-change, pero yung mukha, hindi. Ba- ba- grabe na, ano no? Grabe na rason. <laughs> Tawa ako niya every time I remember that. Ma- ma-change lang daw ang ugali, pero ang mukha hindi. So, okay lang. May chance pa. But, but we're reminded of this. Your beauty should consist of true inner self. The ageless beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of the greatest value in God's sight. Now, people worry... No? People worry about life's beautification. So, siguro, time na din sa atin na tumingin. Ano bang nagkakos worry sa atin? No? Ano bang nagkakos worry sa atin? Mga bagay ba na sa labas lang, do we invest more on things on the outside? or rather than things on the inside. Now, real beauty, according to the Lord, starts in the inner body. In other words, the Lord values inner beauty more than physical beauty. Tayo lang siguro. No? Tayo lang. We must admit, tayo na mga tao, that we admire more physical beauty than inner beauty. Siguro, ano na lang natin. But sana, kung paano, Tumingin ang Panginoon sa mga tao, ganoon din ang pagtingin natin. Ha? Pagtingin natin. You know, ito pa. Bakit magiging source ng worry ang beauty? Ito. Beauty will be a source of worry if it does not give God the glory. Naalala niyo ang workshop that you have attended na isang famous cosmetologist ang nag-host from skin care to soul care. Anong ibig sabihin? From the outside, going to the inside. Iyan mga bagay na dapat natin tingnan at pag-usapan. No? Maybe some other time, nagpaplano kami kung paano natin ma... We can talk about it. Just like last Sunday, we already have one. And after that, we talk about it and share kung ano mga takeaways natin. Okay, so the next one, we have already life extension. Number two, life beautification. And then number three, what are the things people worry about? People worry about, look at verse 31 and 32. So then, Jesus said, don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the unconverted pursue these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So, what do people worry about? In this passage, people worry about life's satisfaction. Una, life's extension. Life beautification. And then, life's satisfaction. Ito ang mga bagay pala that cause people to worry. Ito din ba ang mga bagay that as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ cause us to worry? Now, alam ko, isa sa mga topic na bakit ko nadala itong worry ngayon, kasi topic din namin to sa D-group eh. And I look at it in study, sabi ko, Ooh. <laughs> God is talking to me na kung pwede i-share ang, ang blessing. And I know they're listening right now. Nandiyan sila. Sabi ko, pray nyo na ang makita natin dito sa discussion natin, i-broaden pa ng Panginoon as I study more. I study more. Why is worrying not the answer to life's problem? Have you asked that? 
Why is worrying not the answer to life's problem? According to this verse, number one, worrying is the attitude of the unconverted or unbelievers or hindi nakakilala sa totoong Diyos. That is the attitude of a person who doesn't know God. He doesn't know the faithful God. He doesn't know the loving God. That's why he worries. Yan ang tendency kong bakit. Ang worry, hindi sagot sa problema sa buhay. Number two, etong na-discuss namin. Alam nyo, worrying is carrying. Carrying. When you worry, you carry. Anong kinikarry mo? Yung mga burdens. Yung mga load. For example, twist yun. You worry. Pamasahe, pauwi. Oh. Pagkatapos, work permit. Those are the things that we carry. Minsan. Sampo lang. Worrying is carrying. And you know what? Carrying is yielding. You yield to the one you're carrying. You yield to the thing you're carrying. And that is the thing you're carrying will force you to yield. You yield to the weight of the burden. You, you yield to the weight of the problem. Kaya ang worrying, di ba, mabigat? That's why ang, ang, ang sagot, bakit ang worrying is not the answer to life's problem? Hindi siya sagot. Nagpapabigat. Nagpapabigat siya. Ito pa. When we worry, ito pala, that's why God is so concerned. When we worry, we yield to the weight of the difficulty, but not to the Almighty. Sa Panginoon lang tayo sana mag-yield. Itong worry that we we carry, we should yield it to God. Jesus teaches us not to carry our anxiety. Teach na ni Jesus. He teaches us to yield to the Almighty. Why? Tingnan niyo ang sabi ni Peter. 1 Peter 5.7 Give all your worries and cares to God. Bakit? Because He cares about you. So why are we carrying it? Yan nga ang sabi natin kanina, ibalik natin. Worrying is a trust issue. And it is also a faith issue. Meaning, kung nagwo-worry ka, you're still holding to the thing you are carrying. You're still carrying it. You did not yield it. Hindi mo na yield. Hindi mo na commit sa Panginoon. That's why you worry. Are there still things that you worry? Right now? When we look at this, anong ibig sabihin? Meaning, hindi pa natin na-commit or na-yield sa Panginoon. The unconverted or those who do not belong in the kingdom of God worry too much about things that will temporarily satisfy life. Yung tatlo. Life's extension, beautification, and satisfaction. All the things in this world, that are the, those are the things that the unconverted worry too much. And what's so sad about it, even followers of the Lord Jesus Christ are sometimes victim to those things the unconverted are worrying about. Now, here. The Lord counsels those who belong in the kingdom of God to have freedom from the worry and anxiety that comes from the undue concern about material things. The purpose of this life, according to Jesus, and he revealed it, is to prepare us for the world to come. When I think about this, kagabi, I was able to think, sabi ko, Lord, Please reveal to me kung ano pa mga bagay na gusto mo that you're going to speak to your children tomorrow. And when I saw this, I realized this, sabi ko, parang maiyak. Uh, it, it touched me to, to the core. Ito ba? I hope this will be an encouragement sa atin. If you 
put too much emphasis on the things of this world. You are not trusting the goodness of the Lord. He cares. He cares. If we commit, yield to Him what are the things that we worry, hindi niya kasasabihin, mamaya na wala pa kong time. We'll not say that. We'll not say that. Jesus contrasted the life of those who do not know God and are separated from Him with those who do know God and receive His loving care. Those who know God should not seek after other things. And now, that leads us to the next question. So what should they seek? What should they seek? Here's the next question. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But above all, above all those things we mentioned, life's extension, beautification, satisfaction, above all, pursue His kingdom and righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Above all, But seek ye first, that is the original. Seek ye first, above all. Now, the word above all and first comes from the word foremost. May gatas tayo na brand foremost, di ba? Ang gandang reminder. Siguro sa atin yan, foremost. But above all, but seek ye first, foremost, pursue His kingdom. Now, anong ibig sabihin nito ang foremost? Ito, I'm going to explain. And talagang tiningnan ko itong, sabi ko, why, why, why not spend a little time with this, this, ang dami-daming paborito nitong verse. In, I don't know, even sa inyo siguro. It's a, this is a, a verse that we, we hold on. Sabi ko, pakitingin, and the other, other, ano bala, other angle ng verse. I know, nakarinig na tayo ng maraming devotion at message. Sabi ko, tingnan natin in a different angle. God's endeavors and all activities related to God must be weightier, compelling, and have more significance than the rest of our ventures or pursuits. Yan po siya. What else? Jesus reminds us that our physical well-being is not a worthy object to devote much of our lives and time because we are not created like animals. If we think that food, clothing, and shelter is the ultimate thing to pursue in this life and has become our God, then our life is cursed with worry. And we live too much like an animal. Why? Because we are overly concerned with physical needs. So how can we stop worrying? That's the question. We talk about worry, so how can we stop worry? Now, again, balik tayo dito. The word seek the word seek is continually seek. Hindi lang seek no one time, but continually seek God in His kingdom. Continually. Araw-araw. And ang word na kingdom, anong ibig sabihin ng kingdom? Well, the word kingdom is realm, sphere, or domain, which Jesus rules. In the kingdom of God, maraming scholars na nagsasabi, but when we look at the kingdom of God here, it is where sa atin kingdom, God lives in you, God lives in me. That is the sphere, that is the domain. Huh? Na si Jesus nagru-rule. It is the sphere where Jesus set up his activities, endeavors, and business. As members of the body of Christ. 
Ito ba nakita ko? So kung ang kingdom of God is the sphere or the domain which He rules, ito, as a child of God, you belong in the domain that Jesus rules where He is the Lord, Master, and King. I think kung hindi pa natin ma-absorb, yan po siya, where we belong. We belong in the kingdom of God, and in that kingdom, there was king. There is one king that rules. He is the Lord, He is the Master, and He is the King. As someone who belongs to the domain where Christ reigns supreme, ito na, our Lord and King calls us to make His endeavors, activities, and business our top priority. That is why we belong to the kingdom of God. Matthew presents Jesus Christ as King. That's why he's always talking about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. At anong ibig sabihin at the back of it that Matthew is presenting to us that Jesus is the king, meaning he rules supreme. He is the master. He is the Lord. And we are his slaves. And we are his servants. In the kingdom of God, where the Lord rules, Anong ibig sabihin nito? If you are going to look at the verse, put God's endeavors, God's activities, God's business, our top priority. Give priority to God's command. Yan ang ibig sabihin. Yung kaninang sabi natin, God's endeavors and all activities related to God must be weightier, compelling, and have most significance than the rest of our ventures or pursuits. Now, example for this. Kung meron tayong activity, meron tayong mga endeavor na para sa Panginoon, i-compare natin ang activity natin, which is weightier. Si, sa, alin sa kanila ang mabigat? For the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, always mabigat ang endeavor, ang business ng ating Lord, ang ating Master, and, our, uh, and ang ating King. Hindi to palagi ang nasa baba at hindi una-una. Can you imagine living in the kingdom? Who is supreme in the kingdom? That is the king. And his activities and endeavors must be followed. Meron ka ba nakita na servant na umuuna na mas priority pa niya ang kanyang endeavor kesa sa king niya? Wala. But sad to say, that is happening in the body of Christ. Nakalimutan na natin, we are not the king. He is. Kaya wag natin ilagay na mga activity ng Panginoon, second lang sa iyo. Iset aside mo. ba? It will cause you to worry. Ito ang arrangement na binagay sa atin ng Panginoon. So you know what's the cause of worry? One of the things, we put our activity, our business, our endeavors on top kaysa sa ating master, kaysa sa ating king, kaysa sa ating lord. If we make God and His kingdom's interest a priority, we will forget to worry. Anong sabi dyan? He will take care of our needs as He promised. Now ang tanong, if that is the arrangement, where is worrying? Diba? Ang tanong na bakit tayo nag-worry, minsan hindi natin alam. Bakit nag-worry tayo? Ito, binigay ng Panginoon. Kung sa ilunggo pa, ginplastar sang Panginoon, sang Diyos. This is the arrangement. Hindi tayo mag, pwede magpalit ng Panginoon kasi He is the Sovereign Lord. He has the right. He has the right to make the schedules. He has the right to, to plan all the activities and His missions and everything. Hindi po. Wala pa tayong karapatan. Dapat natin kilalan. Wala tayong karapatan na ilagay ang activity natin 
weightier than than our supreme lord than our supreme master and our supreme king if we make god in his kingdom's interest a priority that is matthew 6:33 we will forget to worry he will take care of our needs because he promised it if that is the arrangement ang tanong ko sa iyo where is worrying where is worrying? Susupply na lang pala ng Panginoon kung unahin ko siya. Settle that arrangement now with the Lord. Don't wait. Matagal pang 2022. And I think, and I do believe that if you follow this arrangement of the Lord, it's gonna be a blessed 2021. Full of encouragement. Full of joy in serving the Lord. Full of joy pursuing our Lord. Joy abiding with the Lord. Joy in pursuing others to make disciples most especially for the Lord. Settle that arrangement now with the Lord. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate. Do it now. In our seats, in our seats, makapagsabi tayo, Lord, it's gonna be you on top of the priority sa taong ito. Have you given the Lord a chance sa buhay niyo for a year na nagiging top priority niyo ang Panginoon? And for those who did, kamusta naman? Kamusta nung binigay niyo ang Panginoon na top priority? Minsan, yung mga bagay natin activities, ano, sanay na ako dyan, okay na ako dyan, ito na lang muna, may ano lang. No! Hindi, hindi ganun. Ang Panginoon natin ay supreme. King, hindi po siya natin bibigyan ng mga leftovers. Our best, the best of our strength, the best of our talent, the best, best of our gift na binigay niya sa atin, ibibigay natin yan sa Panginoon. He must be on the top priority sa buhay natin. The faithful servant who is holy, committed to the king, need not worry about everyday life. The essence of our existence is more than what we will eat and what we will wear. Yan po ang essence ng existence natin dito sa mundong ito. Ito pa. In this life, our ultimate Pursuit is our king and his kingdom. Everything else will fall in line after we do that. But seek first the kingdom of God. This must be the rule of our life when ordering our priorities. Hindi po nagfi-fail ito na arrangement sa buhay. Hindi nagfe-fail. Bakit ako makasabi na hindi nagfe-fail? Una galing sa Panginoon. And I've seen people who order this life like this that has been blessed by the Lord. It is proven and tested in the life of those who have taken God's word in their lives. And bakit nandito yan ngayon? It is also a challenge sa atin to take this word into our lives. Let us not think that this is just another priority to fit in our list of priorities and to put at the top. Instead, in everything we do, we seek first the kingdom of God. I'm going to leave you this question and then we end. Is seeking God's kingdom our top priority this year? Ano pa ba ang ibang priority that tops seeking God's kingdom? Alam na natin ano ang mangyayari if we decide to do it. God bless po sa lahat. And to God be the glory. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your help. Talk to us through your word. Marami mga beses, dear Heavenly Father, that we put you aside and we put more priority that 
only pertains to this life and are temporary in nature. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive us. Today, you, are, you reminded us again with your word to put, put more priority on your endeavors, in your activities, in your business that you have entrusted to us, that you would want to accomplish through your children. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for forgiveness and at the same time, we pray that the Holy Spirit will enable us and always remind us in our hearts, in our minds, to put priority to our King, to our Master, and to our Lord. Salamat. We give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name.